My name is Devin Palmer. I'm a uh, wood turner here in central Ohio, originally from uh, northeastern Indiana. I make wooden bowls out of uh, what I call reclaimed urban forests. These are trees that had to come down for some reason or another. I, I try to avoid taking down trees that, that probably have lived longer than I have. Um, and it's a good way to um, recycle uh, used yard waste and, and such. Um, typically what I do is I start with a, a, a trunk section out of a, uh, a tree. Trunks tend to be a little bit more balanced um, and a lot more stable. And then I'll cut it, uh, you can see the bark on the outside here. And then I'll cut it in the shape of a little bit of a stop sign. And then I'll drill a hole in the center and then I'll mount this to my lathe. First thing I'm going to do is cut this piece round and get it balanced. Start to knock some of the bumps off. I've got a uh, little knot inclusion here that's uh, giving me a little bit of a rough ride, but uh, I'll be through that shortly. Shape. You can see some of the sapwood on the outside here. I'm going to try to keep as much of that as possible just to add a little bit of contrast. I define a good form as one that's having no flat spots, unintentional flat spots, and one that has a, a very even, almost catenary type of curve. Now as I am turning, I'm not actually watching what the tool is doing. I'm looking up the top to see the end result, because that really that's what I care about. I want to make sure that the curve is even, and that if I need to change, direction of where I'm cutting so it will look smooth and balanced. On the bottom, this is a, a tenon that I've cut that I'm going to grab onto with this four jaw scroll chuck. It's pretty important to get these very exactly cut because this is all of the mounting safety and security and what keeps this from coming out. I'm going to take the top of the bowl down to where there's no pith, the exact center of the tree, because uh, the pith is the most unstable part of the tree and the most active when it was young and uh, it's very likely to have a crack start out of that if I leave that in there. So I want to get far away from that down into the stable outer parts of the wood. So I'm going to make a series of cuts that kind of lower the top down. I'm going to punch straight in. comes to shape and style, I, I like very minimalist, kind of simple, clean lines, not a lot going on, because um, I don't want the shape to compete with the natural beauty of the wood.
ready to make my final cuts. I've uh, just ground a tool so it's really, really sharp, so it'll be a very uh, low pressure, clean, even cut. It's going to leave a really good finish so that I, I won't have to sand very much. This tool is less about machismo and really more about practicality. Um, I need this long to handle so that I have control when I'm deep down the bottom of this bowl. So uh, this is designed to reach far over the tool rest here and allow me to kind of scoop out all the wood that's down the bottom. So the final step for this now that I've got the inside hollowed out and it's an even thickness all the way throughout. That way uh, it'll all dry at the same rate and it'll kind of warp um, as it dries. Um, I would then turn off the foot, create a little bit of recess so it has a little bit of a circle to set on, uh, finish it with um, a natural beeswax and uh, mineral oil finish that I get uh, right here from within Ohio and uh, use it for serving salad, holding fruit, or just for looking cool. What I just showed you was a, a single turn bowl. This will get, uh, as it dries, it'll warp and kind of go a little bit crazy. Some people like that. Other people like something that has a very clearly defined shape. And for those, I do uh, twice turn bowls. I'll use the same process to hollow it out and shape it, but I'll leave it extra thick. Um, and as you can see, it'll kind of go oval and it'll warp a little bit, and then later, after uh, really what is two or three years of drying time. Wood only dries at, at the rate of about an inch a year. Um, I will put this back on the lathe and I'll true it up and turn it a second time, sand it and then finish it uh, for the final product. I also make a few other kinds of things. I make uh, hollow vases. Uh, this one's actually made in two pieces out of uh, entire logs um, or segments sometimes and uh, small things like uh, this is a uh, Coco Bolo pen. I get uh, all of my exotic hardwoods, which I rarely use uh, from uh, responsible forestry methods, uh, renewable. Uh, this wood uh, came down with a hurricane, Hurricane Luke, I think, three or four years ago. So again, these are, these are trees that came down through natural causes, not ones that were harvested. Um, bottle stoppers for wine. Um, again, here's a... Uh, a single turn bowl, you can see it's perfectly round. Sometimes I'll do a little bit of a decorative edge treatment with either wood burning, pyrography, or uh, some other kind of decoration. And uh, I also do some, uh, some natural edge things. Again, these are kind of, uh, these warp and get a little bit crazy and have that, that smooth sinusoidal curve along with uh, this rough natural textured bark edge. So if you're interested in finding more about my work or me, uh, you can get a hold of me at uh, devinpalmer at gmail.com or visit my website, devinpalmer.com. I've also got an Etsy site, devinpalmer.etsy.com. Um, also, if you're interested in finding more about wood turning, um, you can go to uh, centralohiowoodturners.org. It's a, uh, one of the larger wood turning organizations in, Amer in America. We have over 220 members, uh, 120 of which meet regularly over at OSU at Kinnear Road. It's a mentoring organization, uh, no cost or a problem in coming and checking us out. I encourage you to do so. And uh, also, if you're interested in taking classes, uh, check out woodcraft.com and search your local store and uh, any of the wood training classes there. I'd be more than glad to teach you.